Good morning, Philippines. My name is Bunta Negros Oriental, and welcome to another edition of FlexiEd, or Flexible Learning Experience in Education, brought to you by the Department of Education, Division of Negros Oriental. This is Leia, and I'll be your host this morning. Last week, we got to talk to Malu Yudala, who gave us insights on resilience, how to bounce back better and stronger amid the pandemic. Today, we will have a timely topic because we'll be discussing how to enrich online community. Now, this is very essential because one of our learning modalities is online learning. Now, our guest speaker for today really knows this stuff, so we are really excited to have her with us. So I'd like to introduce her to you today. Our speaker is currently the CRC Coalition or Civil Society Coalition on the Convention on the Rights of Children, Secretariat Coordinator and Local Program Manager of the YCL, Young Southeast Asian Leadership Initiative, Civic Engagement Professional Fellowship, a collaboration between the U.S. Embassy, University of Montana, and Y Goal Incorporated. She is the former project director of the Voice Philippines Linking Learning and Facilitation Grant and former OIC executive director at the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines, or ULA. Currently, she's completing her Master of Public Administration with special specialization on regional administration and local governance at the University of the Philippines National College of Public Administration and Governance or UPNC bag. Friends, let's all welcome Miss Crystal Eunice De La Cruz or Nice. Hello, Nice. Hello, Atalea. Hello, Negros Oriental. Kumusta dira? <laughs> Kumusta ka? Naka rin sa Manila, di ba? Yes. The rainy Manila. <laughs> Ngayon. Hi. How are things there? I know that Manila has been hit hard by the pandemic. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? How are you and your husband doing amid yeah. the pandemic? We're still in GCQ, Ate. And um, mm -hmm. so far, we're trying to stay at home. But we have the liberty naman to go and buy essentials already right now. Okay, that's good. That's good to hear. You stay safe, okay? Yes, you also. <laughs> Thank you. Now, today you'll be talking about how to uh, enrich online communities, which I feel is very timely. Kay lagi learning, online learning is mm -hmm. one of the learning modalities karon sa atong education sector. So we're really excited to learn from you tonight. Yes, and so, I'm excited to share also. Okay, great. So please take it away. Okay, thank you, Adelia. And thank you. Um, thank you very much also for the opportunity to be able to share my experience. So, may yung buntag sa atong audience, especially sa mga teachers sa Negros Oriental. And again, uh, we're going to talk about and reaching online communities. And of course, given lagi sa pandemic, sa COVID-19 situation, we are all forced to migrate to online platforms. And this has been a challenge as well, especially since we bring together a group of people, no, uh, together online in a platform. So again, I'm nice. Uh, I consider myself as a student of life. I don't consider myself as an expert in anything. So uh, what I do really is project management. Uh, I also do policy and lobbying. And I um, study local governance, even national governance. And I'm an advocate of inclusion, which I think will really refer in my next slides. Ano. So I hope um, we learn together this morning. And um, again, I'm very happy to share this. So we're going to discuss just five ways no, on how we can improve the dynamics of online learning communities or a group of online people, people online in whatever platform. So just to take note, uh, the, the presentation and the notes are generic, pero I, I will be discussing some parts na very relevant also sa atong mga teachers who, of course, uh, sabi nga ni Atalea, a part of the blended modality is online teaching and online learning as well. 
So to start with, my number one tip or yung first way talaga is the creation of a full value contract. Now the concept of full value contract or the FVC, uh, FVC is actually a list of agreements for everyone in the group to follow. Now it's called full value contract because we throw the question of how can you, so personal question siya, no? how can you as part of this community, this especially if it's a learning community, um, enjoy the full value or maximize the potential of the platform or the engagement or the session. So I actually do this in the trainings and in face-to-face -face contact. And in my experience, it's also very important to have the full value contract in online communities or in online groups. So the full value contract is co-created and dynamic. Ibig sabihin, dapat lahat ng members of the group agree to the full value contract. It's also dynamic because at any time, they can add, they can edit, or they can actually remove some of the points in the full value contract. And one of the things that um, we have to remind the members uh, of the community is that it should be observable. So we do away with the motherhood statements and we have to specify things that we can observe and assess kung napafollow ba or hindi siya napafollow kasi important siya sa pag-evolve ng ating FBCs. And so let's go to um, an example. This is what we follow in one of the Facebook Messenger groups in one of the communities that I handle. Ano? Para lang you have context. So number one na agreement namin is all posts should be about COVID-19 updates. That's because yun yung purpose ng group. So it will also matter kung ano yung purpose ng group. Number two, agreement namin. No political posts or rants allowed. That's because in this particular messenger group, we have members from all walks of life, from around the country, and from different ano, political ideologies. So the main purpose of the group is to really share COVID-19 information, clarify some things, and partner in things that we can actually do given the COVID-19 situation. Um, so basically for this, it, it already branched out to a subgroup. Eh? So there's another messenger group specifically for political posts and rants. But only those who would like to be part of that and perhaps uh, is ready to engage in a, in a, in a safe place of conversation. Uh, you can share, but you don't necessarily have to agree on anything. Uh, but you can agree to disagree. The important thing is to discuss kayo. So, Yun yung nangyayari ngayon in this particular messenger group. Number three is sharing of information and asking of questions are encouraged. And number four is to use respectful language at all times. Now let's look at one of the uh, groups. Ito naman ang full value contract ng isang grupo that I manage uh, that regularly meets uh, in Zoom meetings. So ang number one uh, full value contract that we agreed on is for us to be patient, uh, if kung may problema, syempre, madaming hirap sa internet ngayon, iba-iba tayo ng uh, access and equipment uh, to, in, to internet. So it's important to align, to agree that everyone should be patient. And kung may problema, just log out, log in again. Ayan. And then next is to keep muted when not speaking. Uh, so of course, one of the challenges talaga ngayon is uh, distractions and noise when we have online online sessions. Number three is commitment to be 100% present, no multitasking. So this is also very important because we're online, especially if we are following the number five ano, full value contract point, which is to keep videos off unless requested to turn on. So hindi mo alam kung nagmi-meeting pero naglalaba na, na nagwo-wash ng plato or naglilinis or naglalaro ng game sa ano sa phone so it's very important also for us next is all meetings uh, will be recorded and sent to all after this is actually to appease those who are part of the meeting who are having technical problems para kabalo sila na if 
dili sila makaparticipate in a certain part of that section. They can go back to it later on. Next is to keep videos of, actually this is really because of limited internet infrastructure. So for this particular group kasi, it's all around the country, including rural areas. So marami sa kanila, mahina ang internet. So malaki ang tulong kung naka-off ang video while the sessions are ongoing so that they won't have any problem um, connecting to the internet. Lastly, be understanding of distractions due to work from home arrangement. So for example, for the CRC coalition, since syempre, we are um, advocates of the rights of children, we also understand na halimbawa, kung may meeting at may umiiyak na baby, then that's okay. Kasi that's the reality of work from home. And not all of us have that space that we can allot exclusively for work. So yun yung mga alignment. So siguro, just a reminder also, when we do our sessions online, let's remember to get consent, especially if you are going to record the se online session. And as part of the child participation uh, protocol to ensure na safe ang ating mga bata, usually if we get consent, number one, dapat meron siyang kasamang adult, so parent or yung nag-aalaga sa kanya. And then we have to make sure that even the asking for consent is recorded. Just also para documented yung ating pagkuha ng consent dun sa bata. Otherwise, um, if we post some photos online, dapat hindi kita yung face ng ating mga bata. Dapat either nakablur sila or to be more, uh, to be safer, dapat hindi kita yung actual face nila, uh, features ng face nila, or any identifying feature or gamit nila. Ayan. So, next is social listening. So, it's very important when managing online communities that we create platforms and opportunities for feedback. Um, it's also important that we read between the lines. Kasi minsan, hindi naman nila diretsong sasabihin sa'yo, or it actually reflects in their language. If it's a video, it will re if it if it's a video meeting, it will reflect in their facial expression or in their nonverbal gestures, and make sure that we are inclusive as possible. Of course, ano ibig sabihin kapag sinabing social listening? So it's the very simple. It's as simple as gathering data. Of course, yung assessment natin after a session, de ba? What worked? What needs to be improved? Um, it can also be as simple as as a moderator of an online group, you just say na uh, for any concerns, you can directly send me a personal message or PM me for any feedback or any concerns or any questions that you have. Another thing that I do really personally is to send a personal message to check in on them, especially yung mga kasamahan natin online na not as comfortable to speak and share online. Uh, usually, we drop them a, hey, how are you? How are you doing? Um, and minsan, dun sa personal check-in, tsaka nila na share at nabibigay yung feedback nila. Dun sa nangyayari sa online platforms. This is also very important because with COVID-19 and with the pandemic, yung iba sa atin experience anxiety or kasi it's very unfamiliar eh. So, it pays to make people feel that we actually care for them and sometimes it only takes one message to do that no one personal message okay so next tip is to ensure relevant regular content in multiple modalities so um this also reflects communities which are meron kasi mga online communities na facebook page sila or facebook group so for this particular ano, sector of online communities, it's very important that th there's regular content. So, when I say regular content, say for example, every Tuesday, merong i-expect na video, every Wednesday, my workshop na expect um, So, that's also very important that they know that they, they can expect, they can look forward to a specific content at a spe specific day of the week. Another thing that we should remember when talking about content is the relevance of the content. So I remember before, the online group kasi that I manage, 
hindi naman siya specifically about COVID and it existed even before COVID. So before we talk about what um other issues, various issues actually. Pero when nung nag-strike si COVID, there was the no eh, the 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 overwhelming ano information coming in uh to all of us. And it became important not to post irrelevant information in in those groups. So it's very important to post relevant content. Um, and syempre ngayon, mas regular na tayo to regularize that content as well. Another important thing is to repurpose content to ensure that we have low bandwidth alternatives, especially siguro sa atong mga teachers. So again, if we conduct live classes, we have to make sure that it's recorded given na may consent ng bata and of course ng adult na kasama ng, ng bata para kung meron tayong mga uh, bata na, na log out or naputo lang net or sumama yung weather and uh, hindi na makalog in ulit, they can always go back to that. And if we can be two steps, three steps ahead to have a PDF or a Word file which they can review yung mga nangyari doon sa lessons. So we have to be very in- inclusive as well right now. And lastly is to integrate offline activities like arts and crafts. So madami tayong nakikita online. Dagan kayong mga articles saying that Zoom meetings or online meetings actually are more stressful than face-to-face meetings. So I think that it's also it's also nice to integrate some offline activities like arts and crafts, something that they can do kahit hindi sila online. And then maybe they can share in one of the online classes na lang later on. Yan. And and many other ano, offline activities siguro that our teachers can think of. Number four, very important to integrate fun and interactive activities. So this is because Say for example, no, sa school setup, unsa yung nawala sa atong mga bata and siguro even with our teachers, no, like for us in office, nawala yung chikahan over breaks, over lunch breaks. And those sessions actually, sessions talaga, no, those fun uh, social gatherings in between work, in between school, that's very important as well uh, in in it in a person so it's very important to consider integrating it in what we do online so ang uban what we do is we have syempre in the platforms that that i work with we have the quiz and game night so baka pwede tayong mag quiz and game hour we can also use other online platforms and online tools to make online sessions more interesting and fun say for example one of my favorites it's actually very simple. It's just the Wheel of Names. So you can access it sa www.wheelofnames.com. So pwede mo magbutang sa uh, names sa inyong students here at the right side. And then you can press the uh, the wheel mismo para mag-spin siya. And then randomly pipili siya ng, syempre winner ang nakalagay. Pero we can actually use it for recitations. Sa amo ang part, we did it for a focus group discussion. And it really helped kasi everyone was on their toes uh, and were prepared to actually be called. Uh, so it really helped. It's a very simple tool. But it's very helpful to ensure that 100% na-engaged ang ating audience in the online platforms. Next is, of course, the very famous... Kahoot. <laughs> so Kahoot is a is an online platform, online tool na para pwede siyang maging pang quiz. So pwede natin siyang gamitin for assessments, for tests, and it's fun. So it looks like this. Uh, there's a question and then atong mga students or the members of our communities can choose kung unsa yung right question and then after some time it will reflect kung What's, what's the right question? And then it will also show kung sino sa mga students ang may pinakamadaming may pinakamadaming score or pinakamadaming right answers. Ayan. So, um, so here's a picture of ano, mga bata who are actually using Kahoot to learn math. And another one, um, 
So this this was actually referred to by my husband. It's a housemate par- housemates party that you can also utilize. So it's all in. We can have like a video call gathering, and then na mar- marami siyang games na rin that that you can actually use. And you can also share screen if you want to present something. Um, so yon and marami pang iba. There's a lot of tools online pa that you can actually utilize to improve and enrich the experience of members of our online communities. And lastly, it's very important, of course, since advocate tayo ng inclusion, lalo ngayon na uh, everything's online, pero the question of access to online platforms and equipment is I know it's 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 a re- it's a real challenge, no. Although DepEd has really reached out to offline platforms using TV, using radio, etc. But when we do online, we have to be very sensitive as well. So number one, if you remember, mo, I actually advise the uh, to integrate some offline activities. Pwedeng modular din siya na pwedeng pwedeng gawin ng bata at ng mother niya and then to be presented. This is also very important because um, come start of the school year, ang parents, they will also allot time to actually assist their children uh, when they start, syempre online kasi lahat ng content pwede nilang i-access. So, kailangan may guidance ng parents and we have to also consider na ang mga parents may work may ginagawa pa sa bahay. So, that's on top of everything na ginagawa ng ating mga kasamahan sa bahay, kasamahan sa bahay ng ating mga bata o ng mga estudyante. So, we have to, uh, this is a good strategy to make sure that um, the adults have actually time to go out and buy personal needs. Uh, I'm not sure lang sa Negros Oriental, no? pero dari sa Manila, we have, uh, we can only go out until around 8 and the supermarkets are closed at around 6 or 7 p.m. So, you know, if 8, 8 to 5 talaga every day, it's very hard to do those things. Next is, of course, be one step ahead in case of technical problems. So, kung mag-online tayo, excuse me, kung mag-online tayo, we have to already expect some technical problems and we have to be one step ahead of those problems, like yun nga, yung sa full value contract na i-off mo na ang mga videos para less bandwidth ang kailangan, naka-record ang classes para mabalikan, and merong prepared na written lessons in uh, Word file or PDF para they can review if hindi nila kayang mag-download ng video uh, .mp4 or video files. And lastly, uh, be understanding of less than ideal setups. So, uh, this is important to be included in the full value contract. Kasi again, not all of us uh, has the liberty to have that exclusive space for work from home and online session. So, yung iba, uh, I know, experience experience tayo dyan. May tumatahol na aso, may batang umiiyak, may nagwawash ng plates, or kung ano-ano pa ba. Pero um, that's normal and it's very important to uh, agree to be understanding of less than ideal setups for online platforms, for our online communities as well. Yan. So basically, that's the last one. So just as a recap, no, what, what can we do? So again, we can come up with a full value contract. We can ensure, so we, we have to ensure social listening, that we're listening to the members of the online communities and adjusting as well based on the feedback that we get that we come up with the relevant regular content with multiple modalities that we try to integrate fun and interactive activities in our online community activities and sessions and of course to be considerate and sensitive to the needs and context and situations of everyone given the COVID-19 pandemic. So basically, that's it. Uh, sana po nakatulong kahit papaano <laughs> sa ating experience, um, especially when we start the school year and of course for those who will be teaching via the online modality mode or track. So thank you very much, Adelea. Thank you so much, Miss.
nice. It's nice. We really learned a lot, especially since we're being a in Sabi Mona. One of our learning modalities is um, blended education, which has online education as one of its aspects. So what would you say to teachers who are apprehensive about their know-how, mm-hmm. um, like when it comes to technology? Um, mm-hmm. So what is your word of advice for them? Um, actually, I think two days ago, I gave a session naman on um, creating videos and using online to teach to ano, teachers around the country. And actually, kung, kung first time mo, uh, our advice is just do it and learn along the way. So siguro in, in, preparing, in preparation for the start of the school year, the teacher, lalo kung hindi siya masyadong familiar with technology, can actually do test um, online sessions or Zoom meetings with fellow teachers or with a child or a friend para ma-explore niya yung online platform na pwede niyang gamitin. Kasi I'm very sure there will be challenges and it's very important to be familiar with the platform and to know kung ano yung mga bagay na makakahinder sa online discussions and sa learning. And again, to be one step or two steps ahead, even uh, the limited infrastructure in, in the country. Thank you, Ms. Nice. As they say, it's not going to be easy. Mm. Like, um, we will face a lot of challenges in the next few months as we roll out blended education for the first time in history in mm. a widespread such short time with the shift. But, you know, with all the challenges we see opportunity and from what you just said we have to embrace innovation and not fear innovation mm-hmm. so thank you so much Miss nice any last words for our audience um, before you go Paul? well um siguro as the last word no the for me what really runs uh, an online community especially kung ikaw ang moderator is the genuine care and concern for the members and it will reflect in all the five ways that I actually share. Parang kahit wala in five ways, you will do it if you genuinely care for the members of, of the community that you're part of. And I'm sure ang atong mga teachers have that genuine concern and love for their ano, for their students and the ultimate goal talaga for the students to learn. And I'm sure na it may be hard, pero... Go lang ng go until ano, we, we get the hang of it and be really, really good at it. So there's no way talaga but to try. Thank you so much, Miss Nice. Uh, we love your presentation and we hope we'll see you again for our future Flexi Ed. Thank you, Atalea. Thank you. And that was our edition of Flexi Ed or Flexibility Experience Education in the Division of Negros Oriental. And as what Miss Nice said, go lang ng go. This is Leia saying, have a wonderful morning and don't be afraid of change. Let's embrace innovation. It is a proof of life. Good morning.